Hey, presto, Gavin here. Uh, April last year, the start of the lockdown, I wrote a eight-point PDF called Eight Things to Do to Keep Your Boat Afloat Business Survival Guide. And I thought it'd be really good and timely to revisit the eight points to see how each and every one of them are still applicable to what degree and sort of focus our mind, not only just keeping your boat afloat, but sort of navigating the course to beyond COVID and to recovery. So the eight points that I made was, number one, look after employees. Two, cash strategies to ensure liquidity. Three, ascertain your supply chain. Four, talk to your customers. Five, pivot and adapt. Six, check your marketing. Seven, community and eight, mindset you can still grab yourself um, a free download of that um, keep your boat afloat business uh, covid survival guide go to bit.ly forward slash keep your boat afloat or one word keep your boat afloat so let's take each one of those in terms you know in turn number one look after your employees um i think you know, that, that idea, that Richard Branson quote, look after your employees and they will look after your customers. And of course, they'll also look after your, your suppliers as well. And that many have been working from home, as we know, for and some indeed for, for a year now. And we know sort of uh, certainty or indication of when they are going to go back into the office environment. And whilst there have been some gains, you know, saving on time and cost community, commuting, you know, saving on the cost of takeout coffees and lunches, etc. For some, though, they've lost that social interaction and they're feeling, you know, a little bit isolated. And certainly, you know, it can feel a little bit Groundhog Day just sat in front of a screen and staring down the lens of a little camera webcam on your, on your computer or your laptop. So it's it's really important to, that we are always thinking about our teams to think, what what can we do to create that social interaction, to create um, a sense of companionship and community? And I'll come on to community in a bit, but it's one of the other points. But it's really important that we're thinking around... Um, team huddles, you know, get-togethers, you know, one bit of best practice that I've come across this year is Monday morning team meetings done, you know, with a video call, but they're sharing, you know, tales or photographs of what they got up to at the weekend, <laughs> which just can be done, you know, in the context of lockdown, um, you know, walks out in the fresh air, etc., and, and, and family stuff. So that's um, that's been a good way of actually really connecting with other members of the team. Friday afternoon get togethers, whether it be, you know, over a over a bottle of beer, you know, remotely or a cup of coffee, again has been a highlight for the teams for the week to have some kind of a social social interaction. But as you're thinking about going to recovery, and I've spoken you know at length in the past about um there being, you know, a pandemic of burnout, I think you, you're going to see more and more the need to be thinking about what are you doing to look after the mental health of your employees, what are you doing to create some fun, to create some humour in the working week and also to make sure people are feeling part of, uh, you know, supported in their work. The second point, cash strategies to ensure liquidity. Many business owners reached out to either government-backed preferential loans that were in place, such as in the UK, C-bills and B-bills, and furlough uh, support as well for their employees. But as I've said before, that many of those in companies who took advantage of that had back in 2020 headroom in terms of their ability to borrow and that uh, it has been eroded now so you need to be really as, as as careful as ever on credit control on you know chasing up monies and getting them paid as quickly as possible cash flow forecasting not only is key and i've seen a greater incidence of cash flow forecasting taking place in businesses but also cash flow forecasting against a number of different potential scenarios keep doing that that's really important um you know writers and, and authorities like mckinsey's are talking about a lot of um work being done in corporate of being cash flow forecasting across multiple different scenarios and the the balance sheet and profit and loss forecasting in addition to that all been pretty key and in, important so you know think about not only where you might need to deepen cost cuttings going forward, but also what you're going to do around promotions for revenue generation. Uh, number three, ascertain supply. You know, for 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 uh, many businesses, and it's still the case now. There are 
constrained supply chains um, uh, for for all of their sort of raw material or component parts. And they've had to, out of necessity, start to look for localised supply chains um, lo- closer to home. And I think you'll see much more of that now where people are finding more localised, in some cases, higher cost base manufacturing capabilities um, closer to home in order that, that they can actually complete their finished product that they're taking to market. So... I think you're going to see an, a, a greater trend, say in the UK and the US, I think you'll see a greater ch- trend of onshore localised manufacture to help to create alternative sources of supplies so you can still get your goods or your, you know, your products to market. Um, number four was talk to your customers. This has been as critical as ever before, understanding what their evolving needs are, understanding um, w- what what problems they need help solving and, and, and that your product and your service is still relevant to those. So those conversations with customers, I think, uh, are really, really important. And again, with less travel and more people connecting over you know, Zoom and Teams, etc., um, th- there's a greater opportunity for that. Um, Pivot and adapt. I think we've all uh, heard, got, gathered over the last year some new words in our business uh, language lexicon, you know, the word furlough we hadn't used until about a year ago. Um, and now um, another one is um, our pandemic pivot has been, you know, that phrase pandemic pivot has been become a new, a new sort of business jargon phrase. But many businesses have done. They've increasedly serviced customers online uh, and uh, grown their online revenue significantly. You know, I was speaking to a, a client uh, the other week who's uh, got a microbrewery and um, they lost a significant amount of orders obviously from the pub trade but saw a 250% growth in their online sales which was a it w- was a saviour for them so their online sales was a relatively small part of their business but of course it's now the part of their business until you know until pubs and stuff reopen um, so yeah the, the, the shift online all has continued and um, you know McKinsey's and others are saying that um Virtually the whole population has bought online when or brought product categories online where they would not have done so previously, and importantly, they're reporting that uh, they will continue to buy online going forward. I, I've uh, always been a, a, a massive use of uh, sort of online purchase of stuff, having always lived kind of either busy away traveling or lived in relatively rural communities so that um, actually it was just always easier to, to jump onto Amazon or wherever to, to purchase online. But for many, they have actually gone and embraced that uh, that way of, uh, of engaging and shopping, whether that be from their supermarket food shop or whether that be uh, for household items, clothing, etc. So think though about that point about pivot and adapt is there further areas of where you can change and deliver your product or your service online and how could you maybe take what was initially a sort of a patched together a cobbled together approach of delivering a service remotely into a much more sophisticated tool there are development massive sort of developments going on in terms of the cloud-based software tools that enables us to create a better community experience with our customers Check your marketing was number six. Check that your languaging of your, you know, your ads, particularly at the beginning of the lockdown, back in sort of uh, beginning of April in 2020. Make my point there was there are still some ad campaigns that are being run that are, that were before lockdown. So make sure that they're relevant. But again, now because you've been talking to your customers, make sure that your ad campaigns are putting the pushing the pain points that are speaking to the problems that your customers are wanting to solve or the aspirations that they're wanting to. Achieve achieve community was number seven and the point there was around um you know how could you create create a sense of community not amongst not only amongst your employees but amongst your customers and your suppliers uh and actually spend some time you know talking to engage with suppliers again the lack of commuting the ease and the adoption of video-based um uh, connection through zoom and teams and microsoft teams has really made that uh very very doable and and a lot more people that wouldn't have naturally jumped in sat in front of a webcam are doing that as a matter of course now i I certainly developed some fantastic relationships over the course of the last 12 months you know through really genuine business yielding relationships that wouldn't have happened if it hadn't been for the increased outreach and connection that people have been making to build a sense of community and to contribute i see within those communities a greater level of collaboration even a degree of bartering actually in terms of i can help you and you can help me back where there hasn't always been an exchange of money but 
has been a, certainly an exchange of skill set and a, a collective willingness to support each other. I think that collaboration over competition, I think that sense of community is going to continue to endure and will be a trend going forward. And I think there's some interesting things like, you know, the the fact that the new social media app Clubhouse has blown up and it's been the case of communities and people wanting to reach out and connect and talk to each other when they can't physically travel and get out face to face, I think has been another really interesting, uh, a re- another really interesting development, a trend that will continue. And the, the, the final point of my eight points um, in the Keep Your Boat Afloat uh, PDF, um, remember you can grab yourself a copy of that, go to bit.ly forward slash and keep your boat afloat, bit.ly forward slash keep your boat afloat, all lowercase, or one word. Uh, the final point was eight was mindset, you know, guard the door to your mind. I know personally, um, you know, in terms of my morning routine, I would always start with exercise and then quite often I'd kind of get interrupted by the children and then after the exercise and I wouldn't always necessarily get the opportunity or, or, or once I got into the day of the meetings to do the mindset stuff and you know since the start of the year I've really flipped that around and my first priority is the mindset stuff so that's the focusing on you know what I'm grateful for visualizing the goals of uh, what I'm achieving what I want to achieve and then reading and going through my identity statement about the vision of the 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 you know, sort of uh, aspirational person that I'm growing into and then I follow that up with the exercise and that for me has actually worked really well and um, for for seeing how important that might work on mindset is for your mental health for your resilience for your focus and for your uh, productivity it's been it's, it's been mission critical and, I, and i'd really encourage that as part of your daily practice you know at least five days a week make sure you're spending time focusing on what you're grateful for visualizing the results that you do want to achieve getting excited about those seeing them and feeling those happening as if they've happened already and then uh, creating what i call an identity statement of this is a description of the the, the person that you're growing into of who you are what your life's like the goals that you're achieving and you know as part of that visualization and and density statement you really are focusing on your goals for the next um you know year three years over that kind of time frame is really really important yeah so daily practice of those mindset things are absolutely critical the more people i talk to the more i recognize that that is proving to be a real godsend if you like and real savior for them in terms of mental health and productivity and focus is by regular um, commitment to a daily practice around mindset so the points that I raised a year ago just under a year ago were still equally as valid now but let's change our focus towards pushing forwards for the recovery the voyage to recovery of look after your employees make sure you've got good cash strategies to ensure liquidity that's going to be even more critical as we go further into 2021 make sure that you've got um, you've ascertained you know reliability of your supply chains we're looking for local supply where necessary um, keep engaging talking to your customers exploring with them what they where they need help how you can better serve um look for the opportunities to adapt to pivot um keep checking your marketing to make sure that it's relevant to the changing needs of the marketplace build communities not only amongst with your employees build them with your customers build them with your suppliers it's massively important reach out to other business people in your local area you know and that's another thing about community that i think is really important i think there's a there's a a trend of local people buying local hyper local but also you know wanting to uh, create that local sense of, commu- of community. So I think that's a certain trend uh, uh, for you to look into in terms of your business as well. How can you play to that trend of uh, serving customers much more geographically local to than you might have done in the past, even down to your own sort of village or your own town. And then uh, community, we've just talked, spoke about and the importance, finally, number eight of mindset. So yeah, bit.ly forward slash keep your boat afloat. Those points, keep your boat afloat. Those points are still as relevant now as they were a year ago, but keep your focus on ongoing towards recovery. <laughs>